Creators, it is a Tuesday afternoon, grade 10s, I hope you're ready. You should know what's happening by now. We are doing physical sciences. I am Looney and joining me in studio is Phil. Phil, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks to you, Looney. I'm good, thank you. What are we doing for the Mindsetters today? Well, we're going to continue from last week's theme. We're going to be talking about some motion, maybe introduce a few graphs today. So I want them to get some rulers out, some pens, paper. Okay. Cool. Work with us. Get All the right. notes. Cool. Mindset is you heard it. Get out your rulers, your pens, and your papers. What am I saying? Your pens and your papers, and let's get ready to learn. Don't forget to hit us up on Twitter at Learn Extra, and our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Learn Extra. Remember to download all your show notes, your videos, your schedules, and everything else you want to know about Learn Extra Live and Mindset on Learn Extra at CO.za forward slash live. Thank you so much for tuning in. And before we start, I'd just like to send a shout out to my very special friend. Sunshine, watching all the way in PE. Hello, friend. I love you very much. And with all that said, Phil, let's take it away. Thank you so much. What an amazing introduction. And we're dealing with motion again, guys. Now, this was one of the sections which will stick with you all the way through to matric. So if you get it right now and you get the foundation good, guys, you're not going to struggle all the way in matric. I know that there's some matrics that still worry about graphs of motion creeping into their exams. Well, today is where we lay the groundwork. Today, we're going to set that foundation in the basement, and hopefully you can build on top of that. Okay, so let me just put you in the picture. So far, we've taken a look at some vectors, some scalars. We've seen how to add them up, and we've seen how to measure out distance and displacement on a map using a scale. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to start introducing a slightly mathsy aspect. Uh, we're going to be dealing with some of the mathematics behind motion. We'll start introducing some of the numbers, some of the units, and even some of the very simple graphs. But guys, if graphs is not your favorite section in maths, don't worry. I'm going to hold your hand, we're going to walk through this, and it's really not going to be that hard. So what I want you to do, like Looney says, get on the page, guys. There's free notes over there, and those notes have got a lot of the slides that I'm going to be using today, and you can actually graph this stuff out with me. This is a live interactive lesson. You should be typing on Facebook, drawing on your graph, and watching us all at the same time. So this is a true multimedia experience. Okay, so here we go. We're going to deal with motion today. Let's see what's on the menu. Now, for those of you that weren't with us last week, or for anyone that's forgotten some of the stuff, we're going to be revising some of the more difficult words. I'm going to be revising some of the words like displacement over there. Displacement was one of my favorite words from last week over there. And we're going to talk about what displacement was, and then how we got velocity from our displacement. Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about those words, and we're going to be theming today mostly about displacement and velocity. We're going to be talking about moving from one place to another, and how quickly do I get there is the question I'm going to ask. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can describe how something moves. One of them is using numbers, and we've been doing that now for two weeks. I've been giving you quantities, which have got magnitude and a unit and direction. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use some graphs. So we're going to talk about graphs of displacements versus time, and we're going to talk about graphs of velocity versus time. So there's quite a bit on the menu today, and even if we get a little bit of time later on, I'm going to introduce the concept of acceleration. Okay, most of us have heard that one before. Most of us have talked about acceleration. In, in a normal English sentence, I can say, I accelerate in a certain direction. Now we're going to see what it actually means in terms of physics. When we start talking about numbers and units and graphs, and it all becomes a little bit confusing. Now the biggest mistake that you can make in science is to be loose with your scientific terms. Let's be very specific, guys. Use the correct words in the correct places, and you can't go wrong. So today is partly an English lesson. We're going to be talking about the terms. Now, first of all, we're going to do a little bit of revision from last week and the previous week. And we're going to start off with these quantities. Okay, so now I've said that we need to revise these terms of displacement and velocity. Now, let's take a look at what those two words have got in common. Both of them are vectors, guys. I can tie these both together because they are both vectors. Now, most of you have managed to figure out, and I actually saw some great comp contributions on the page. Most of you guys have got a very good grasp of what uh, a vector is meant to be. You said, ah, Phil, I've been watching you, and you say that a vector is something with both magnitude and direction. Now, what does that actually mean? I mean, magnitude and direction, I can't really describe something as having magnitude and direction unless I know what those words mean. Now, it's very difficult to describe what magnitude really means. Now, it's an unusual English word. Let's talk about magnitude. Magnitude is how much we've got. 
I want a great magnitude of wealth in my future, of health, of everything, all the good things. I want a great magnitude of those things. That means that I want to have a large amount of that. So if something has magnitude, you're describing how much you have. And then, this is probably the trickiest part of vectors. Vectors don't only have magnitude, which I can measure using numbers, but they've also got direction. Now, this is quite a tricky thing. Remember I said displacement. Displacement, oh, okay, that's movement. That's something to do with movement. But now, I've noticed a lot of people get into some really bad habits when they're talking about displacement and velocity and acceleration. They say the object moves. Okay, but now we've got to describe how it moves and in which way does it move. And I'm going to be using these two words to describe what's actually going on. There's many different things that I can talk about in the movement. I can say, well, I move, uh, well, I move to Durban, or I move to Cape Town, or I move to PE. And uh, does that describe how I got there, how far away PE is? No. I need to use words like displacement and velocity. So guys, get used to using them. I know you can talk to your mom tonight or your brother or your sister, whoever's cooking your dinner, start talking to them about displacement and velocity inside the kitchen. That's a good way. Practice with these words and practice makes perfect. All right, so let's talk about these two words. Let's describe what they were again. Okay, displacement was a change in position in a particular direction. Okay, now I'm going to focus firstly on this part that says change in position. So what does it mean to change your position? Well, it just means that I start in one place and I end in another place. So all I've done is I've now changed position. So what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change position one meter, but now there's a little piece of information which is missing. If I change my position by saying one meter, I've taken a direction into that because I, I could have gone one meter to the side or one meter to the other side. What I've left out is a direction. Now since I love you guys and I want to be closer to you, I'm going to take one meter step towards you. <laughs> And what I'll notice is that I've now got a direction and I've told you how much I'm going. Now you know a lot of information from where I started and where I ended up and that was closer to you guys. Unfortunately, I had to step away to teach you guys, but I want to move on to this next one. It's a close relative of displacement over here. Now velocity describes the way in which I move. Now there's a very big difference. So what I want you to do is to practice this. So now this is something that you can do in front of the TV. Now, if you're standing in one place, that's your starting position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a half a meter forward. Okay, now there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I can go one meter forward, or I can take a quick hop. So one meter forward, and that was really quick. Now, both of them achieved exactly the same thing. So both of them had the same displacement. The big difference was how quickly I did them. What I did was I changed my velocity, the rate of change of displacement. So I changed the rate of change. I did the second hop really quickly. That meant that I had a very high velocity, whereas the first time I took a long time to change it, and that meant that this was a really slow velocity or a really low velocity. Now just remember that because you're using displacement, I must also adopt direction. So if I said, okay, well, it took me one second to move half a meter, think about this. I've actually given you all the information that you need to calculate the velocity. So I said half a meter, so there's a change in displacement, in one second. Okay, so now what would my velocity be? It would be half a meter per second. That tells me that I changed half a meter for every second that went by. What I didn't say in my velocity, and this is quite a big no-no, is I need to say, where am I moving while I'm doing that? And that was towards you guys, closer to you guys. Now, very often if you're not given north, east, south, west, don't just say north, east, south, west because you feel like right is always east on your page, and it's not. It's not unless that's absolutely true or it's given. Reference another object. The reason I like to use you guys is because I know that you're on the other side of this camera loving me back, and I can step towards you guys. All right, so I've got displacement, I've got velocity. Fantastic, now we know what they mean. So what I wanted to do was to just discuss some of the units and to revise some of the calculations which we did last week about motion, then we'll climb into the really interesting stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to give you an example. A girl walks 20 meters east. Okay, so now there's a lot of information in these three little pieces. 
So what have I got here? Well, I know that this girl is walking, and it says 20 meters. Okay, now this is quite a quick walk. We're going to figure out soon. So 20 meters. So I've got a magnitude, and I've got a unit which identifies what I have. Now, I've noticed a lot of grade 10 say, I don't need units because I don't need to put them in my calculator. No, guys, the units are absolutely amazingly important. Because 20 meters, you know that I'm talking about displacement or distance. Now, when you see east, ah, all of a sudden I have a magnitude of 20 meters and a direction of east. That makes this a displacement. So it says in a time of four seconds. Now, that is a little bit quick. So when I went through this again, I thought that's, that's quite a quick walking goal, but we're going to work with it anyway. Now, it says the time given was four seconds. Now, we're going to work out the average velocity if the displacement given is 20 meters and that time given was four seconds. So now we're going to work with the units. Now we're going to start to get into the actual meaning of what it means to be the rate of change of displacement. Well, how much displacement was changed? 20 meters. What was the rate at which she did it? Well, 20 meters can take me an hour. It can take me a few seconds. It took this girl four seconds. She's really fast. Now, let's take a look and see how we could actually do this. Let's calculate the velocity by taking the displacement over time. Now, I don't usually use the word equation because that's something we used to use in grade 9 a lot. But what I wanted to do was to have the word equation and the symbols right next to each other so that we could work with it. We saw this equation last week. That to calculate velocity, I needed the change in displacement over the change in time. Now, I know exactly what these numbers are because I've just given them to you. Now, just a reminder that when you do these calculations, we're going to do lots of these today, that I want you to keep the direction of your displacement. If I use a vector to calculate a new magnitude, I must also keep the direction of that original vector. So that means if I use the displacement, I need to keep its direction. So let's do this. So my change in displacement, how far did she change her position? She changed her position by 20 meters from her starting point. How long did it take her? What was the change in time? That was four seconds. Now, notice how I didn't put the units into my substitution. You don't have to, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add them in there because I've noticed a lot of grade 10s are getting very lazy with their units. And you might say, okay, well, units are not necessary, only at the answer. No, 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 get into the habit, guys. Units can even give you the formula to calculate something. So if I see meters divided by seconds, all of a sudden it's very easy to find out what the units for velocity are. Velocity is something, something meters per second. And if you put in 20 divided by 4, I'll say 5 meters per second. Now, a lot of you are a little bit confused about this little piece over there that says seconds to the power minus 1. The only reason that I put seconds to the power minus 1, and you might see this in some textbooks, is they might say 5 meters per, and this is how you're used to seeing per, second. Now, the only reason that they've taken the seconds and multiplied it and put to the power of 1 is that's the same as dividing by seconds. If you put anything to a negative power, that means divide by. Now, you might say, why don't they leave it in that format? Well, what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep all the units on the same line. So meters times second to the minus 1 is the same as meters per second. But guys, we're not done yet. There's a thing which I've forgotten off here, and I told you to watch out for it. I wonder if you can guess what it is. I've got a magnitude, I've got a unit, and if you've guessed it, I need to add a direction to my velocity. Don't get lazy. Anything which is a vector needs a direction. So if I went 20 meters displacement, there was my velocity. She was headed at 5 meters every second east. So that means 5 meters per second is. So she went, after the first second, she went 5 meters. After the second second, that sounds a bit strange, 10 meters, then 15 meters, then 20 meters. And that's after her 4 seconds. I really want you to get to grasp with the units today because they're very important for understanding the graphs and especially the definitions when we start dealing with some of these. So guys, I'm hoping that you're on board with this and you're enjoying this because I am. And after this, we're going to start drawing some graphs together. And I want to see if you guys can scale out graphs because graphs are really important for this section. They help me actually see the numbers. 
Now, you might say that's a little bit strange because I can see numbers in front of me, but graphs are really important. Guys, I think I'm going to give you a little bit of a break, maybe to go get some rulers, some calculators, some pens, pencils, maybe some snacks. <laughs> okay. Mine says, says we are going to take a very short break. Just very quickly, a shout out to Victor, Sanele, David, Libya, Tuanelo, and Apiva. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. You guys are awesome. So make sure you go get your pens and your pencils, your papers, your rulers, and everything else that Phil said you need to go get. And we'll see you straight after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you guys are nice and refreshed. You got some snacks and you got all your stationery, your rulers and everything else that Phil told you to get because now we're going to do graphs of motion. So I hope you're excited just as I am. So Phil, take it away. Thanks so much, Lenny. Okay, well guys, as promised, we are going to start dealing with some graphs and I hope that you've downloaded our notes because the exact same graph paper which I'm using in the studio here, you can get at home. This doesn't mean that you can't work with us. It just helps a lot, guys. They're for free. And my motto is, if, if it's free, it's me. Yes, if it's free, it's for me. There we, we used go. to say that all the time. There we go. Okay, guys, <laughs> they are, fr are for free. You can watch last, les um, last week's lesson. The video is up on there. It's really kind of weird to watch myself, but it's really cool for you guys. You can re-watch and re-watch and re-watch until you understand. Get the notes, work with them. Guys, this is the way forward. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be graphing out some motion. Now you might just say, well, how do you graph out something's motion? Well, guys, it does have something to do with the numbers involved in there. Now, I'm going to dig right down deep, and we're going to start investigating what the units mean. Until you guys say, okay, Phil, I can see why you're doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now draw a graph of displacement versus time. Now. I like to call these position versus time graphs because displacement is actually a change in, um, in position. So there it is, the position relative to the starting point. Oh, a lot of people at that first sentence went, mm -mm. no, 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 no. I don't know, you've just said lots of interesting words and I'm going to ignore all of them. Okay, so guys, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dress down the language a little bit. We're going to take it piece by piece. Okay, now it says the position, now relative just means that relative means compared to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my distance away from my starting point. That's not so difficult. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, here by the board is my starting position. All that I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure how far away from the board I'm traveling in a certain direction. And that is how we draw these graphs. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna do a very, very simple question. I'm gonna show you how these graphs get put together. Okay, so now here's the basic layout of all of these graphs. Just some things to pay attention to is when you give these um, axes label, sometimes you put in the symbol, sometimes you put in the actual word, but always, always put your units. Guys, if you're drawing graphs inside exams, there can be a mark deducted for leaving out these units. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a position versus time graph or a displacement graph. Now let's play around with something which is moving, and here's the inf information. So it's an object, it can be any object, it can be you, it can be me, box on the ground, and it's moving at two meters for every second. Hmm. So most of you have already started going, okay, well, it looks like he just gave me some information about the motion. He told me that for every second that goes by, I'm moving two meters forwards, or at least two meters in our particular direction that we're concerned about. That could be north, east, south, west. Right, it can be in any particular direction. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to change my position by two meters every second that goes by. Now, I'm going to use my graph paper very cleverly because we're going to come back and we're going to divide some things. Okay. Uh, Luni, how's the page looking? Well, the mindsetters are quite enjoying the show. No one's been asking any questions so mm. far. All right. Can we take a very short air break? I think so. Okay. Guys, we're just going to take a short ad, ad break. What do you think? Yes. Mindsetters, we're going to take a very short break. Think about your favorite teacher. I'll tell you some great news after this, so don't you go anywhere. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from a very short break. Before the break, I told you to think about your favorite teacher or teachers touch your life or a teacher you just love. 
and you just think they are so awesome and amazing. So we have the Stars in Education Awards coming up and we want you to nominate your favorite teachers. I will post all the information on our Facebook page on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. So think about your favorite teachers guys and tell me on the page who you think you would nominate and why and just talk to me about your favorite teacher while Phil gives you the lesson again. Phil. Thanks so much, Lenny. Okay, well, before the break, we started talking about um, displacement stuff, and we started talking about how I'm going to graph position against time, and I gave you some clues as to the graph that we were going to be drawing. So let's just go through that question. Let's refresh those brain cells, and let's start talking about what's going on here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph which has got an object which is traveling at 2 meters for every second that passes. So after 1 second, it's traveled 2 meters. After 2 seconds, it's traveled... 4 meters, then 6 meters, then 8 meters, then 10, then 12. So every second that goes by, it's going to go up another 2 meters. So what I mean by it, I don't like that word in science, what I mean by the displacement goes up by 2 meters for every second that goes by. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a graph. So I've prepared a graph down here. I've made sure that my axes are correct. And we've got a good setup for a position versus time graph. Now what I've got to do when I'm sitting with a blank piece of uh, graph paper in front of me, I need to make sure that I've got enough space to do this all in. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the major grid lines over here. So the very dark lines. Now I'm hoping this comes through very nicely on your screens at home. But I'm going to be drawing in a nice green color because green looks really nice on these graphs and let's start taking a look here so now we're going to start out there so on the bottom left corner of this and we're going to start out there is our zero for our displacement and for my time so that's going to be zero on that axis and zero on that axis now what i'm going to do to make this a nice big graph is i'm going to mark out my seconds so i'm going to talk about one second i'm going to talk about two seconds three seconds now Always make sure when you're given a certain particular set of data that you've got enough space. So that means that you're going to use up as much graph paper as possible because a big graph is an accurate graph, is a graph that's going to get you those marks that you want. So let's do for eight seconds. And we're, f we're actually going to find out that we go well off the graph here. So what I want to do is I want to choose a scale for the other side which works out very nicely. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you, and I'm going to use the same grid lines. So I'm going to talk about 1 meter, 2 meters, 3 meters, 4 meters. And I hope you guys are doing this at home with me, because the more you practice these graphs, the more sense they make. Guys, just watching me do it is absolutely silly, because you're not actually going to learn anything just by going, mm, yes, Phil, I know how to watch you. Understanding what I'm doing over here doesn't actually teach you anything unless you actually take it and you make your own version of it and you make it your own. One of my favorite teachers in high school, he was even my Afrikaans teacher, said, mark it your A. And he means make it your own and accept the information for yourself and make your own version for it. And he was one of my favorite teachers. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to graph out the information. Okay, now here's where it's going to get a little bit interesting. So I'm going to choose another color here to start stepping one second forward and two meters up. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a little bit of a close look at what I'm talking about there. Now, I'm going to draw in the first couple of steps and you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to go one step forward. So there we go. There's my one step forward and then two meters up. Okay, so there's my first step. So now here's my second point. So let's draw in my second point over there. So that's where I find myself finishing off that graph. OK, now how do I take the next step? Well, I said for every second that I go forward, I must go two meters up. So let's do another couple of steps here. So one second forward, two meters up. That lands me up at four meters. Remember, we predicted that a little bit earlier. And let's keep on stepping, and let's keep on making those points. So my second point is at 2 seconds and 4 meters. There it is, my nice green point over there. And we're going to keep on stepping up and stepping up. And all that's going to happen is I'm going to keep on stepping 1 second forward, 2 meters up. 1 second forward, 2 meters up. And you're going to notice that I'm going to run out of space very, very quickly. I think I've got an extra line in there. Let's just move that off the graph. Now you can see that I'm going up in regular steps. Now, let's just add some points to all of those to make this into a proper graph. I'm going to show my points very clearly when I'm plotting graphs. Sorry, plotting graphs. 
as long as I'm not eating up my words. And now let's put a straight line through all of these. Guys, if you can see a straight line through all of your points and you've got information about all of them, I'm going to show you how to draw a line of best fit. Now this one's really easy because all the lines are in a straight line. That means that you pick up your ruler, and I'm going to do exactly that with you. So we're going to pick up a ruler and we're going to put it on our graph. Now let's just fetch my ruler. I think it's up at the top here. Now let's put it onto my graph and I'm going to show you how to do a line of best fit. Okay, now it's almost impossible that your ruler is going to line up perfectly with all of your points. This one should be fairly close if you've done it correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ruler down at the bottom. Now let's rotate around my ruler. Now take a look and see that not all of these points line up exactly. Now sometimes your graphs are a little bit off axis or you'll notice that some of your points are slightly out of line. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to try and average them out to make a nice clean line which balances out those points. So it doesn't necessarily have to run exactly through all of them. You can see that some of my points are sticking out more than others, but you can see that my ruler is nicely aligned up with all of them. The idea is to get a balance on either side of that. This is called a straight line of best fit. So we're trying to average these points out. So now I grab myself my ruler, my pen, and here we go. Let's make myself a really nice line of best fit. So there we go. This program is great. It allows me to draw along the surface of my ruler there, and I've got a line of best fit over there. That's fantastic. So now that I've drawn my line of best fit over there, I can take my ruler away and inspect my hard work. Now you can see all of those steps over there. I just want to revise what we've actually done over here. So something amazing has happened. We've taken one step forward, and we've taken two steps up. One step forward, two steps up. One step forward, two steps up. Now that's what it means to travel two meters for every one second. Those steps are adding up to my straight line graph. This also starts to give me a little bit of a clue as to how I'm going to get my average velocity for a particular time. So now if I wanted the average velocity for a particular time, let's say for the first second. Now this is where things can get a little bit confusing. I want to find out what my average velocity is for the first second. I can see my first second is over there. It starts at zero and it ends at one. That is my first second. The average velocity over there is quite easy to calculate because I know what's going on. Let's take a look at my graph. Let's see the values and let's try and see what my velocity would be. Now I'm going to use this to calculate. V is equal to change in x so there we go, change in x over my change in time. But wait a minute, that looks kind of familiar. That looks like an equation from maths when I deal with graphs. Guys, I'm saying change in the y-axis over change in the x-axis of a graph. What I've worked out here is actually the gradient. Let me stop for a second and tell you why that's really important. That means that if I find the gradient on an x versus t graph, or a displacement time graph, I can find the velocity at one particular point in time. That's really, really cool. I can use one graph to draw my second graph. So I know that my average velocity for the first second is equal to, now let's do my change in my displacement. So it's 2 minus 0, and you might ask yourself, why am I doing that? Well, it's change in x. So I started at 0. That was my initial. My final was 2. So I've got to say 2 minus 0. Those are my two y positions over there. So change in x over change in t. What is my change in t? It's 1 second minus 0. And most of you have managed to work this out inside your heads. If you say 2 over 1, I'll get 2 meters per second. Okay, now we're not sure about the direction, but we can say in the original direction of motion if we'd like, but it's really nice. We've just managed to figure out that the gradient on an x versus t graph has gotten us the velocity of this object during the first second. Now, if you'll notice, anywhere that I do this, let's say I wanted to find out the gradient somewhere over here. I'm going to do the calculation with you because a lot of people get really scared when they see the word gradient. And they say, oh, the gradient, the gradient, this is not math. Guys, this is such easy math. And I'm going to guide you through another example of how to find the gradient on one of these lines. In fact, when you do this in your science exam, you should actually point out which two coordinates I've actually used to try and figure this out. Now, to do that, I need to write out what my coordinates are. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out this particular second. Now, this is a bit of a tricky one. Which second is that that I've pointed out? I want you to look very, very carefully. Is it the third second or is that the fourth second? Now, give it some thought here. I started after three seconds had already passed. What happens is then I begin my fourth second. So what I'm calculating here is actually my velocity for the fourth second. So let's try and figure out what these are. Let's actually do the calculation for the velocity during the fourth second. Some of you are really bright and switched on and will have done this inside your heads already. But guys, if you're a little bit confused, guys, this is a little tough. This is a little challenging. But let's stay together, let's do this together, and we can work it out. Okay, so now let's take a look at the change in position. So what was the change in position during the third second? So let's take a look at the change in position. Well, I moved from that position, which was 6. I went all the way up to 8 meters. Okay, so I went from 6 to 8. So my change in position was 2. Let's just check it out. So my final position was 8. My initial position, I subtract from it, which was 6. What was my final time at the end of the fourth second? 4 minus where I started, which was after 3 seconds. And what do I land up with? 2 over 1. And that's still 2 meters per second in the same direction that we were going. Guys, I hope that you can see that I'm moving two meters up for every second that I move forward. And that's where I'm getting the velocity. Guys, the gradient gave it to me every single time. Now, it was quite easy to see from this graph that the gradient just stayed the same the whole time because it was a nice straight line. Now, it's not going to stay that simple in the second part of this show. When we start doing graphs and acceleration, things are going to change slightly. So, let's turn our attention now to our object, which is not going to be moving at the same speed. We're going to be dealing with some displacement, which is changing every second. Let's start to take a look. Now, I've got a displacement versus time graph ready, but here's the information. So it says it moves two meters in the first second, ah, but a further half a meter for every second that passes. Oof. What does that actually mean? Okay, well, what this means is that it moved two meters in the first second, but then in the second second, it moved 2.5, then 3, then 3.5, then 4. So what it's doing is it's increasing its displacement that it, um, it passes through or manages to achieve by an extra half per second. I want you to try and visualize what this graph might look like inside your head. So let's draw up our, our, our axes. I think we're going to take a break just now, but I just want to set up the axes before we go. I want to see if your graph looks the same as my graph when we come back from that air break. So let's set this up. Zero for both axes. So let's use my major grid lines again. So one meter displacement, two meters. We're going to run out of space quite quickly on this one. Four meters displacement, five meters displacement, six, seven, eight, and I actually want to make some space there, 9 and 10. Now, guys over here, I'm betting that we're not going to have m that much time because what's going to happen is we're going to see an exponential graph. I hope that you can actually see what that means. Now, before we get too excited about exponents and all that, I want you to try and plot this out. So let me give you the starter before we go for that ad break. Let's deal with this. So I said it traveled 2 meters in the first second. So one second forward. And then two meters upwards. So that was my first step. OK, so let's draw in those points. Let's just make sure that we're plotting this all correctly. So there we go. I started at 0. It moved two meters in the first second. Now what's happened is for the next second that goes by, it's not going to travel two meters, but another 2.5. So it's going to go one second forward. But now instead of going two up, it's going to go 2.5 up. Now something very strange has happened here. It's not going up by the same step anymore. And that's going to be a bit of a puzzle when we start to draw this. You're going to see that you're not going to get this really nice straight line anymore. So guys, I want to leave you with this. I want to try to get you to practice this and see what it actually means in terms of the graphs that we can start drawing off here. 
So guys, plot this out. Keep on that same trend. So just to remind you what I'm looking for, the first step was 2 meters high. The next one is 2.5. I want you to continue that sequence. So for every second that goes by, add another half a meter. So the next one is going to be 3 meters. Guys, short ad break. Draw those graphs. We're going to come back and we're going to start seeing how those change into velocity time graphs. Lenny? All right. Just before you go, guys, I'd just like to send a quick shout-out. And Tammy asked me to send a special shout-out to her. So Tammy Tsiritusi, shout-out to you. And Phil, okay, no, we'll take this question after the break. So my set is don't go anywhere. Go work out your graphs and go get some water and some juice, and we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. From that break, I hope you guys are refreshed and you're ready to learn more. We do have a question from Tami Tsiritusi, and she's asking, when doing the graph, are we going to draw the zigzag line, or do we only draw the straight line? Okay, now that's a very good question. I've used a zigzag line to show them how to get to the next point, so you don't have to show your zigzag line. Now, the only time that you need that zigzag line is when you're starting to think, okay, what's the next step when you're drawing up your graph? Now, guys, in most times, they're actually just going to give you the data points. I just want to show you how it's moving from one point to the next. So you don't have to draw in the zigzag line at all. Really nice question, though. How's the Facebook page looking? Well, we also had that one question asking if the graph is moving by 2 meters per second all the time, or is it just because it's moving 2 meters up? Oh, OK. Yes. All right, so the first graph, yes, 2 meters per second yes. was the first graph's displacement time graph. Okay. So it was going 2 meters up for every second forward. But now what we're going to do is we're going to start linking this up with velocity versus time graphs. Now, I'm not sure how much time we've got, but I want to make sure that we can start to play around with the graph that I left you with. So what you'll notice is that the second displacement for that second was slightly different. So I'm going to draw my next zigzag line in. I'm actually going to go one second forward. Okay, so there we go. And remember, that was two, 2.5 up. Now I'm going to go 3 up from there. Now you'll see why this is going to become increasingly difficult, because we're going to go further and further and further up. So currently we're at 4.5. We're going to go 3 up. So we're going to go 3 up all the way up to 7 and a half. So there we go. That is 3.5 big. I'm just showing you all these steps. Guys, you don't have to draw in the zigzag line, but it's just really good practice, because it tells me what these units actually mean. Now, what I can get from all of this is now I can see that this is not making a straight line, guys. If you can see that your lines are clearly not straight, you've got to get out your hand skills and you've got to do this freehand. I can see that this is not making a straight line, guys. What I can see is that I'm starting to make what should be quite familiar as an exponential graph. It's curving, guys. It's curving upwards. And a curve on a displacement graph means one thing. I'm changing my velocity because I'm changing my gradients on here. How much I'm increasing by is changing, guys. And what I can actually do is I can start calculating my average velocities for each second. And you might say, why would I want to do that? Well, each one is different, guys. So let's do some quick gradient calculations, and then we're going to transfer them across to our velocity time graphs. So for the first second, I can see that my average velocity over there was 2 meters for that second. So I know that I've got one which was 2 meters per second. Now this one's going to be quite easy. Every second that goes by, it's going to change slightly. So that was 2.5 meters per second. This object is speeding up. It is accelerating. And that's what's causing the curvature in the graph. So for the third one, it's really, really easy. Sorry, I've made a mistake there. I'm hoping you can see it. It's not 3.5. It's 3, guys. I've written in 3.5, but it's not. We've gone up by 3 meters. And that is, oh, there, there we go, 3 meters per second. So 3.0 meters per second. Notice how I'm keeping the same decimal for these two. And I should actually for the third. So let's do act actually that. That's good practice. Now let's keep our decimals exactly the same because we're dealing with data over here. We should keep the same decimal all the way through. OK, so I can see a change in velocity. So during the first second, I had a velocity of 2 meters per second. During the second second, I had 2.5 meters per second. But now, here's the really strange thing. Guys, I can't say at one second. What I've got here now is a new term. I've calculated average velocity. Some of you have talked about this on the page. What I've talked about 
and what I need to put on a graph are different things. Guys, on a graph, you need to put instantaneous values. What, it, what that actually means is, at a particular time, what is the value now? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer across to a velocity versus time graph. The rate of change of displacement is graphed on this one. And let's set up my velocity versus time. Now, I'm going to start out with 0 and 0, but I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So let's talk about 1, let's talk about 2 meters per second, 3 meters per second, and 4, because we're going to deal with that. And then, as we start to move through this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to spread out our time axis. You're going to see why I do this. My time axis, I'm going to use 1, 2, 3, and 4 seconds. The reason that I do that is during the first second, my average was 2. The only time that it was actually 2 meters per second was halfway through that second. Now, that's a bit of a strange concept. Notice how the slope was slightly shallower and then slightly steeper. Only halfway through did it equal the average. Now, I might have lost a few of you over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my handy ruler, and we're going to start playing around with our average gradient again. So let's grab our ruler, let's go to my graph, and let's start talking about average gradient. Now, if I start to take a look at my gradient on my graph, I hope that you guys can see it. When I line up my rule over there, I can see that my gradient through those two points, and we calculated it, is 2 meters per second. Now, the only place on this graph which has actually got the same slope, I hope that you can see, is a tiny little piece right over there. On that smooth curve over there, I can see a place halfway through there which has got that gradient that I'm talking about. That gradient is the same gradient as those two points. If you've been doing some analytical geometry, you'll notice that that gradient and that gradient are the same. So halfway through a time period, what you'll notice and what you can assume, as long as there's steady acceleration, is that my instantaneous velocity at half a second is the same as my average velocity over the entire second. So let's go to my velocity time graph. Now, that means that I only know the velocity at half a second. So let's plot it out. I know my velocity at half a second was 2 meters per second. Now, where next did I have the velocity? Well, for the second second, again, halfway through. I knew that halfway between the first and the second second, what I had was a different velocity. I had a velocity which was 2.5. Then I had a velocity at two and a half seconds of three. So if I go up there, what you'll notice is that my velocity isn't staying the same anymore. And they actually make a really nice straight line between the three of them. You can actually draw a nice straight line through these guys. So there's my line of best fit. I hope that you can see I've balanced it out. Guys, the velocity is increasing. Now what you can see over here is that acceleration has occurred. This is what acceleration actually means. Acceleration is a change in my velocity. And what we can do is we can find out its rate of change, the rate of change of velocity. And we can actually calculate it from this graph. Now, remember that the rate of change of something, all that you need are two points on here. So let's take those two points and let's figure out what the change in velocity over the change in time is. Okay, so my change in velocity over there, I've changed from uh, two and a half meters per second to three, so let's take my final and my initial velocities, subtract them, and the time between them is two and a half seconds minus one and a half seconds. Right, and what I'll find over there is that I've got half a meter per second squared. Now this is a unit that I haven't seen before. It's meters per second per second. And guys, this is the unit for acceleration. Acceleration is how quickly I change the meters per second. Unfortunately, we're running out of time for this week, but there is a part three coming up where we're going to start to deal with some more complex equations of motion. We're going to start to deal with displacement, velocity, and acceleration in those four-part equations. Okay, so guys, stay tuned for next week. Get our videos from this week. Do some homework.
right, Mindsetters, we have come to the end of our show, but do remember to enter your teachers, your favorite teachers. Guys, I see some of you even listed all your teachers that you like, that you'd like to enter into the future, the Stars in Education Awards. Um, competition. So please, guys, go to the link. I did post it on Facebook, and Mindset Learn is one of the sponsors. So go do that, guys, and enter all your teachers so that they can stand a chance to be recognized and win that great award. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, Mindsetters, it's a goodbye from us. <laughs>